Okay, so we set up our 3D scene, and if you don't know quite how I managed to make it look like this, I'm actually using a custom view down here. Usually you have the active camera, and I've got all my layers stuck up in 3D space. So what I've done is I've gone to a custom view, and I chose the option view, look at all layers. And by clicking look at all layers, all the layers became visible, because I was in the custom view. So now I can look at adding a particle system in and ensuring that the particles completely surround all the layers in both X, Y and Z. Which means I need a three-dimensional particle system and thankfully one of those ships with After Effects. And it's found under the simulation category. So if you go down to simulation, you'll see that you've got a number of particle systems and the one we're looking for is this one here which is called CC Particle World. Now to apply it you need a new solid layer. I've got a new solid layer here and then you click and drag and add Particle World to that layer, which I've actually already done. So here's CC Particle World. If I open it up and I hit the play bar, you'll see right in the middle here, we've got this tiny little particle system playing away, which isn't really what we want. It's nothing like big enough, and also we want to create particles that are static. So, first thing we need to do is think about how we want the particles to work. We actually want those particles to be going all the time. So what we can do is we can drag the current time indicator through, in fact, for this, I'm actually going to go back to the active camera. We'll get a closer look at what we're doing. So the active camera is now just looking at the particle system. So we can go through till we know that the particles are constantly falling, which is about one second they're all falling. And we can actually add a marker to the layer to tell us that at that point it's all happening. So select the layer and hit the asterisk key on your number pad to add the marker. So we now know that at this point we aren't beginning but we've actually got the full number coming out. So that's fine. Now, if you open up CC Particle World, the first category is this one, Grids and Guides. You can actually click this, turn off grid, and you won't have that grid at the bottom that we previously had that you might have. Um, I'll just turn it back on and show you, see if you can see it. Here's the grid here. We don't want the grid, so we can just turn the grid off. And what we need to think about is what the particle is going to look like and how the particles are going to work. Now, if we want these particles not to move around, but to be created and stay where they are, what we need to do is think about the physics of the particles. So if we go down to the physics category here, we've got some things that can really affect how the particle works. Firstly, velocity, which is the speed in which they are exploding. Notice we've got the animation category here, explode. So we don't want them to come out with any speed at all. In fact, we want no speed whatsoever. So we can click in that and make it zero. So they are just at the moment coming out and going straight down because of this one down here, gravity. And actually we don't want them to pull down. We don't want them to fall down. So you can see they just get created and fall down. We don't want them to do that. What we want them to do is just come out and exist. So we take gravity also to zero. So now the particles are being created and they're just staying there. But what we actually want to do is have these particles exist and continue to stay existing all the way through our whole composition. Now my composition is 10 seconds long, but if we go right to the top where we look at the birth rate and the longevity, we can see actually under longevity here that they're only lasting for one second. And I actually want them to last all the way through my composition. Now my composition is 10 seconds, but I'm actually going to click this and I'm going to say 13 just to give me plenty of spare space. So they're all going to last for 13 seconds. Problem is, it's going to continue to generate and generate and generate particles and fill up that space. I don't want to continue to generate particles. I want to create my particles just the once. But I don't know how many particles I want just yet because it's not big enough. As you can see, it's a tiny little space. And I want particles to be created over a very big space. So what I need to think about is the producer this little tab here. You can see here I can change the position of where this is happening, but I can also change the radius. And by changing the radius, I'm changing the area in which those particles are created. So for instance, if I pull X across, you'll see particles are now being created in a much bigger area, and Y, and in fact Z is taking us deeper. 
So particles are being created in a much bigger area. But I can't see exactly where these particles must be until I actually go back to that custom view that we got. And I can see, well, here are my particles in the middle. So I obviously now need to start pulling out X, Y, and Z to make sure that it fully surrounds these layers that are in 3D space. So I can pull out X until it's right surrounding them all. And I can pull out Y until it's going up and down above all of them. And then I can pull out Z so that they are definitely before and after these particles. And if I want to, I can still actually change the position of this whole thing, move it backwards and forwards and up and down. So now I've created particles. The problem I'm going to have now is if I carry on going, I'm just going to create more and more and more and more particles until the whole thing is absolutely jam-packed full of them. So the next thing I need to do is look at the type of particle I want to create and then making sure that I have the right number of them and no more. So to create the right type of particle, I obviously need to go down to the one that says particle at the bottom here, second to bottom, and say what sort of particle do I want to create? Do I want to create a line? Maybe I want to create a star. You can see there's nothing like as many of those. Or maybe a shaded sphere or a, a faded sphere. I'm actually going to go for um, a faded sphere, but I can't see them. So what I need to think about maybe is making them a lot bigger. Now, you'll see that it says here birth size and death size. What that means is over the life of the particle, which we've now made 13 seconds, it can start at one size and slowly over that life change to a different size. But we don't want to change the size. We want them to be the same all the way through. But we can pull them right up till we can start to see them. I know, make them 2, 3, 4, 2, 2.4. So that's 2.42. And I want the death size to be exactly the same. So I'm going to go 2.42. So it's going to start at 2.42 and it's going to die at 2.42. However, the only other thing that's going to change is under this opacity map, this color area here. We're saying the birth color is yellow, but as I start to pull them through, you'll see that some of them, well, we're getting new ones all the time, but some of them begin to go red as they get to the end of their lives. We actually want the color to be the same at the beginning and at the end. We don't want the actual particles to change. You can have them change if you want, but we're saying stay the same. So I click the steep picker next to the death color, and I go to the color of the birth color, and now, although I'm getting too many particles, they're all going to stay the same color all the way through and the same size. So now we've got the important question of how many do we actually want. And I'm actually just going to have a quick look back at my active camera and we can see what they look like. So how many do we actually want when we're actually moving? What's going to look a decent number? If we think this is roughly what our camera view is going to look like, do we want this many or do we just want a few? I think we probably just want a few. So what we're going to do is actually go right back up to the top now and look at this one that says birth rate. And we're going to animate the birth rate. What we're going to do is we're going to pull up that number until we get the number that we feel looks about right. So say, I know, that might be too many, but this is an example. So I've got it 5.8. Now I'm going to click the stopwatch. And I'm going to go forward one frame by pushing the page down button. Page down button will move me forward one frame. And then I'm going to take that birth rate and I'm going to click and hit zero. So what I'm saying is at the marker, we have 5.8 particles created, which is just a percentage figure. We're just saying how many they are. So no more are being created. They are actually slightly changing their opacity, but overall, all they're doing is changing color. We're not having any more of them. So I now know that if I can move this marker before the beginning of my composition plus one frame, so click and drag, take it to the beginning of my composition plus one frame, that I'm going to have a static amount of particles all the way through. Yes, they're changing their opacity slightly, but actually that's going to work for us quite well. But the layer's not long enough. Simple. Just take the end of the layer and pull them through. Bear in mind these particles will last 13 seconds, so even though it's 10 seconds, they're still going to be there right at the end without any problems whatsoever. So I've now got a static particle system. And if I go back to my custom view, we can see that those particles are going to be static all the way through. So as I look at layer 1 and then zoom around to look at layer 2, and then zoom around to look at layer 3, and zoom around to look at layer 4, those particles are just going to stay there. And if we add a little bit of motion blur, they're going to look fantastic and give a real sense of deep 3D space. So that's how we can set up our system. Of course, there's lots of bits and pieces that you can actually play with here. 
and that's up to you to actually get a little bit more into Particle World. But Particle World is giving us what we need to really make our 3D space look fantastic. So that's the end of the second tutorial. In the last tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to, we can animate our camera to look at layer 1 and then layer 2, layer 3 and layer 4, how we can make the paths look a little bit more rather than straight lines, how we can curve those lines, how we can zoom in and out of the item, and maybe even add a little bit of variation so that the camera is moving a little bit. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. I'll see you in the next tutorial. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.